Hi, you're right. Welcome to today's art lesson. Today we're going to be looking at the work of Henry Matisse and learning how to paint with scissors. So let's start off by having a look at these two paintings. Well, the same painting by Henry Matisse. And I want you to just take a closer look at it and see how many differences you can see. Okay, so there were 10 differences in total. Obviously, the one on the left is the original and the one on the right I altered slightly. I just wanted to get you looking closer at his work and getting familiar with the style of his work. So, well done if you noticed any of these 10 differences. So, for today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the works of Henry Matisse. And then we'll take inspiration from his painting with scissors selection of work to create our own montage inspired by the greater showman. So by the end of today's lesson, we would have studied the process of painting with scissors through analysing the work of Henry Matisse. We will then use the same process to create our own collage work inspired by the film The Greatest Showman. So, who is Henry Matisse? He was born on the 31st of December in 1869 and he died in 1975. So he worked in many different ways. He was a printmaker, a sculptor, but he was best known as a painter. Matisse also started to create large scale paper collages and he called this technique painting with scissors. And that's what we'll be looking at in today's lesson. So when Henry first started his painting with scissor technique, it was in actually in his later years where illness put him in a wheelchair. But he refused to let it stop him from creating art. So while he was bedridden, he used to cut, the, cut out the paper while sat in bed and then use a long stick to stick them on the walls until he was happy with the arrangement and this process he called painting with scissors. So here are some examples from Henry Matisse. These are the collages he created by painting with scissors. So in today's lesson I want us to look at the colours he uses within his work. So obviously he uses lots of different coloured paper to create his montages and collages. I also want us to consider the shapes that he uses. If you look at the shapes included in these montages now, you will notice that he uses quite organic shapes. I want you to carry this through in our task if you can. And I also want you to consider the colours you are using and where they sit within the paper. So are you going to put a green next to a blue? You might want to consider the colour wheel and how the colours complement each other within your frame. So Matisse also focused on cut out figures and I want us to incorporate this into our work by using The Greatest Showman as well. So take notice how he cuts out silhouetted figures and they quite often capture movement within the figures themselves. You can do this by focusing on pauses by the figure. We are going to do this in our task today. Here are a few more examples of things we can create. Again, pay attention to the cards and the colours used on the frame and also the shapes used as well. We want our work to be really bright and bold and full of movement and lots of layers to create a fun, finer looking piece of work. 
Okay, so let's break down our task for today. Painting with scissors. This includes a few steps, so come back to this slide if you need to. Step one, we're going to gather up all our resources. And our resources include coloured paper, scissors, white card or paper. And then optional, you can have a glue stick as well. So, if you haven't got access to coloured paper at home, don't worry, there are a few things you can do. You can take plain paper and just colour it in, whether that's with a pencil or felt tip or a highlighter, or you can even paint it. As long as you've got about three or four different colours to work with, then you'll be fine with this task. If you're unable to do that for any reason, you could also use newspaper, some magazines, even cereal boxes, old letters, make sure they are old and not important, or any envelopes lying around. I want you to be creative and get your hands on anything you can find which is going to help with this task. Secondly, we're going to draw our Greatest Showman inspired figure and shapes. So there's some references for you on Teams of silhouettes inspired by the Greatest Showman. So head over to Teams and use those references to help you. Thirdly, cut out your chosen silhouette for the foreground and then any additional shapes for the background. You can then lay out your coloured paper shapes onto the white card to experiment with the best composition. A top tip to help you get as much out of this task as possible, when you are cutting out your shapes, try layering up the paper so that once you finish cutting out one shape, you've actually got it in different colours as well. That's going to save you a little bit of time. And then lastly, once you're happy with the positions on the paper, you can either stick them down with a print stick glue, or if you don't have access to glue, just take a photo of your final layout and your image can be the, the final um, montage for this task. No need for glue if you haven't got it. Let's take a closer look at this process with a few images to help you visualise it. So in the first step, we gather up our materials. So as you can see, I've used three coloured paper different coloured papers and just got my scissors and pencil. In the second step I've drawn out my silhouetted figure and also some extra shapes. I've then layered up a piece of blue card, orange card and green card while I'm cutting out the shapes. So for my third step as you can see I've actually ended up with three times the amount of what I've drawn down. So this is really going to help for the montage collage part of the task, which takes us on to step four, creating a montage. As you can see, I've experimented with the different shapes and layouts of the cutout papers. Then the next step, I want you to try a few different layouts. So don't just whack them on a page and be happy with your first attempt really experiment with how they work with each other. Even the cut off pieces of paper you don't think matter, put them into the equation, put them in a background and see how they work with each other. Also remember how the shapes and the colours complement each other within the frame. So as you can see I've put an orange star on the blue paper. This is because they're opposite each other in the colour wheel so I know that they complement each other. And then just keep reworking it until you are happy with the final outcome. So if you do finish all your montage work within the hour, I then want you to do an artist research page. So Henry Matisse is an incredible artist for us to be looking at. And you've got some real good material both within this PowerPoint and you can do your own research to make a really good detailed artist research page. That's going to really help you a workbook. So there's a few pointers on the screen to help you develop a well-informed, reflective artist research page. So you could include information about Henry Pantice, 
just like I did in the beginning of this PowerPoint. You can describe the painting with scissors process. So why did he use it? What did it include? You can also explain how it's influenced your own work. And then lastly, put in any personal reflections about the work. What do you like about it? How has it influenced your work? Add it all in. That's going to make a really well-rounded artist research page. And then I want us to make sure we've checked all these things on this slide to make sure we've got a successful piece of work from today's lesson. So firstly, are you able to say, I have used a variety of coloured paper? Remember, this can be paper you've coloured in yourself or different materials, whatever you've got access to. Are you able to say that you've cut out figures and shapes that are inspired by the greater showman? And then lastly, I want us all to be able to say, I have created a Henry Matisse montage. So let's finish off the lesson by writing down two stars and a wish. And you can do this by reflecting on your work and just pointing out two factors which you think were really successful during this lesson. And then consider one area that you might be able to focus on for future improvement. Once you've finished all this, remember to take a photo of it and submit your work under the assignment on Teams. Good luck and enjoy the lesson.